Hey guys, welcome back again. Today's video is on right hand rule number two. We've already covered right hand rule number one. Uh, right hand rule number two is actually really easy. Uh, uh, we can use it to specifically solve problems. If you're trying to solve problems, I've made videos in the past that go over how to actually solve the problems. They, uh, they may be the older videos in my series, but I'm not going to go back and remake them at this rush time. Uh, what I want to do is actually just talk about how to use right hand rule number two and not do any mathematical calculations. It really addresses a simple phenomenon we, we've addressed before, but we've talked about how if you got a compass near a current carrying wire, in that current carrying wire you would notice a deflection of the compass needle. This is kind of a neat photo I found. It's of a current carrying wire and somebody's done the old iron filing thing where they've sprinkled iron filings around like a surface with this current carrying wire. So what you've essentially got here in black definitely does not help in that picture at all. But what you've got is a current. And in this picture I can't tell if it's going up or down in the wire. But we've got a current carrying some form of amperage. And what we've actually got, and what you'll notice, is exactly this. You will notice that there is a magnetic field that's going around. It's actually traveling in a circular manner. <coughs> Excuse me around the wire. And so that's all right-hand rule number one is. It gives you a direction of the vector. So if you look at this picture over here of a hand, it shows you exactly what you do. You take your thumb and you orient your thumb in the same direction as the current. Literally, take your hand, wrap it around the wire, and look at the directions that your fingers are actually going. So in the case of like this example, your fingers are going counterclockwise. So you've got a counterclockwise magnetic field in the problem. So that's this. Where we use that a lot of times is it's as simple as this. You'll be given a wire. And so here's a wire. And you'll be asked, let's call this dot point A. A very common question then would be for you to be given and just ask, is the field, what direction is the field at point A? And so literally you would need to know direction of the current. Let's just do this. Let's take your hand, let's contortion a little. Let's do this. Wrap your hand around the wire, obviously, it's a virtual that you have to do this. Wrap your hand around the wire with your thumb pointing down. Which direction do your fingers point at at point A? Well, your fingers should be, if you wrap them around this, your fingers should actually be pointing at your face right now. So at point A, I would say out of the page. And you've seen me use that terminology before. So what about if on the other side, point B? Well, if you tried to wrap your hand around this, your fingers would literally be tapping your screen. So at point B, you would say they are going into the page. And so that's how easy this right-hand rule number two is. So it's actually pretty simple. Uh, where it really comes in, and we've talked about solenoids already in other uh, videos, this explains why a solenoid behaves as it does. The cool thing about a solenoid, remember the definition is nothing but a coil of wire, and I cannot pronounce the word coil without somebody laughing. Don't make fun of me. Physics people are human too. But what's neat is the field looks just like the field of a bar magnet. And so what happens is this, you've got to imagine for every little, so in this case, I'm going to take my hand, wrap it around a piece of the coil, and so based on the direction of the field, there, there must be a current going this way in the wire. So literally, in order to do a problem like this with a coil of wire, you literally have to take your hand and look at the direction so it might be easier to get one coil of wire. So let's say we had one coil of wire just like this. Oh, wait a minute. I've already got an example like that. So let's do this one. So this is like essentially a textbook type question. Which direction is the magnetic field in this coil of wire? So it's funny. I actually had a student once at a physics competition carried a piece of wire in their pocket so that they could answer these questions. 
So in the For You Saying thing, that person now is like king of the world. So here we go. Here's this wire, and we've got a current, 7 amps, and it's flowing this way. So take your hand and wrap around this wire so that your thumb points in the same, and obviously there's no way for me to draw this. But what you should notice, though, is you lay your hand on the screen right now, your fingers should be going into this loop, which means the magnetic field is going into the loop. It also means on the outside of the loop that the field is coming out of the page on the outside. Uh, here's a good question like maybe this. So look at this. Here's a wire with a positively charged particle next to it. Remember, just reverse directions for negatives. And the question is literally as simple as, what direction is the force on that particle? So you're going to have to use both right-hand rules. So if the current is going this way in the wire, take your hand and try to wrap your hand around this wire. When you do, your fingers should be tapping the screen over on this side. Your finger should be tapping the screen, which means the field is going into the page. So now, do right-hand rule number one. What's going to happen to this particle? Run your fingers in the direction of the field. So align your fingers so they're pointing straight at the screen. Aim your thumb due north. Which direction is your palm face? Well, you should be learning that the force, and I'm going to change direction. Hopefully, you've already got this. But the force on this object is directly towards the wire itself. And so there is what we learned. So I kind of like this because you get to use both right-hand rule number one, right-hand rule number two. Uh, that would be a good problem to make you like do a calculation to find the magnetic field of the wire. And then like set that to solve for the force on the particle. But anyway, I've got other videos where that do that kind of stuff. Hopefully this was quick, but hopefully this helps you understand. Uh, students typically, I'm not going to lie, they have a good bit of problems trying to figure out this. And it's really just as easy as trying to wrap your hand around a virtual wire. So if you have to, go grab a piece of wire, a piece of string, just to wrap your hand around so you can try and figure out these directions. Anyway, take it easy. Later.